Your testimony is Bob Mueller did not kick you off because of the content of your text. He kicked you off because of some appearance that he was worried about. Sure. My testimony, what you asked and what I responded to was that he kicked me off because of my bias. I'm stating to you it is not my understanding that he kicked me off because of any bias, that it was done based on the appearance. If you want to represent what you said accurately, I'm happy to answer that question, but I don't appreciate what was originally said being changed. I don't give a damn what you appreciate, Agent Strzok. I don't appreciate having an FBI agent with an unprecedented level of animus working on two major investigations during 2016. In addition to disappointing the hell out of my Democrat colleagues, that someone who was investigating Russian collusion didn't think there was any there there, why would you be concerned? Why would you not be ecstatic that there was no collusion? Why the word concern? Sir, I, I don't know what I'm in. All right, that was more of the fireworks at today's explosive hearings, House hearings, with the disgraced FBI agent Peter Strzok. Joining us now, the man you just saw, House Government and Oversight and Government Reform Committee Chairman, South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Congressman, good to see you. Welcome back to yes, the sir. program. Thank you. Let, at the heart of this, I think you captured it there, Congressman, and, and that is a bias, and this man was in the forefront of everything. Do you believe, as I do, that Hillary Clinton had a rigged investigation, that she violated the Espionage Act, it was a big case of obstruction with the emails, deletions, and bleach pit, and do you believe, as I believe, that, in fact, he went after Trump with a vengeance because of a political view that he expressed often? Well, let's take Trump first. Uh, before he ever began investigating alleged collusion between the Trump cam campaign and Russia, he'd already made up his mind that President Trump would be destabilizing for the country. I mean, think about how serious that word is, Sean. Destabilizing for our country, and he hadn't even begun to interview the first person in, in August. He, he, he said, we'll stop it. Uh, we need an insurance policy. And then he began talking about impeachment one day after Bob Mueller's investigation began. So Peter Strzok has a level of bias that would make it impossible for any prosecutor to stand in front of a jury and use him as a witness. On the other hand, while he's convicting Donald Trump before the investigation begins, he's exonerating Hillary Clinton. A hundred million to zero is what the vote ought to be. And he hadn't interviewed her and he hadn't interviewed 30 other witnesses. Congressman, and, uh, did you believe his explanation as it relates to his text messages? I did not believe it. I do not believe the American people believe what they saw today. No, the only people who believe his explanation are the 30-some-odd uh, Democrats. Uh, keep in mind, Sean, 60 Democrats have already voted to move forward with impeachment on President Trump, and Bob Mueller had released his first single solitary finding. So they've already made up their minds. Of course, they'd be sympathetic to an FBI agent who's already made up his mind. He's the only person in America who doesn't think he was biased. He's the only person in America that does not understand how incredibly detrimental those texts are to any kind of serious investigation. So, Look, I spent 10 hours with him two weeks ago, about an equal amount of time today. He just doesn't, he thinks what his personal opinion is, is what the rest of us call bias. Well, yeah, I guess that's what, where the smelly people will go to Walmart. And as I mentioned in my monologue tonight, I happen to be one of those people. I like Walmart, and I like Kmart, and I like Costco's, and I like Target. And you can get everything you want there, and you get a pretty good deal at every one of those places. But the more important question, you, if I remember correctly, you were a prosecutor and you never lost a case. Am I correct in that, sir? I was definitely a prosecutor, yes, sir. I had some good right, cases. And you never I lost a case? I, I had some very courageous right, victims my, and some good cops. So what I want to ask, and this is really important, what I am worried about more than anything else here, if Hillary Clinton is allowed to take things that are subpoenaed and delete them, use bleach spit on the hard drives, have AIDS break up devices and hammers and remove SIM cards and move the Espionage Act. You, you cannot mishandle or destroy classified or top secret information. Both those things happen. He wrote an exoneration with, of course, the FBI Director Comey in early May. They didn't interview her until July 2nd. She was exonerated on July 5th. 
that to me, I, you've been involved in these, these things. Do we have equal justice under the law? Do we have no. equal application of our laws? No, and that's what frustrates people. That, that's, that's what frustrates your viewers who wonder, well, would that happen to me too? Would the director of the FBI announce my innocence before 20 some odd interviews have been done, including my own? And, and keep this in mind too, Sean, they were really clear when they went into her interview. She's not going to be charged with anything unless, unless she lies. So the mishandling of classified information, she was never in jeopardy from that, even, even before they interviewed her. So, look, I think everybody would like that deal, that the, 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 the FBI is going to come talk to me, and the only thing i got to do is tell the truth. Yes, I robbed the bank. Yes, I kidnapped this person. Yes, I committed bank fraud. All you got to do is tell the truth, and you're going to get out of jail free. Converse that with the fact that Donald Trump, not a single solitary witness, had been interviewed before Peter Strzok is promising to stop him from ever becoming president. That is a dichotomy that erodes public trust in our justice system and in our law enforcement. I'm going to have Jim Jordan on the program after, who also had a chance to question Peter Strzok today. I call, when you add the FISA abuse questions that he was asking, I call this the single biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in American history. Let's stay on what you were just talking about. Was Peter Strzok and others, were they abusing their power in an attempt to impact an American election in a way that they saw fit to help one candidate and hurt another candidate? And what does that mean if that can happen in the United States of America, Congressman? Well, a politicization of law enforcement is the end of us. If we begin to view that blindfolded lady holding a set of scales as really having an R or a D on her breastplate, if, if, if that's where we are, then we're finished as a republic. I, I am proud to be on the House Intel Committee, and we've done some really important work on the FISA abuse. Uh, it's been a long slog, and we hadn't had a lot of help at times, but Devin has made really good progress on undercovering what went into that FISA application. So I, I, I don't know. I, I know this. I know that there were lots of things that should have been in that application that was presented to the judge that were not. And I know that they decided not to charge her before they interviewed 30 fact witnesses. So if that is not a dichotomy, that we're going to withhold exculpatory information in this case, and we're going to withhold any prospect of prosecution in that case, I don't know how anyone cannot be left with the conclusion that if your name is Clinton, uh, you're going to be treated differently than if your name well, is Jones or Smith. It, it, what you're saying, Congressman, is really scary to me and should, should frighten every American. I want to ask you one last question. What now? I mean, Hillary Clinton had a rigged investigation. I think the evidence is overwhelming and incontrovertible for obstruction and for the Espionage Act and a number of statutes we laid out here. What happens to her and what happens to the people that were involved in the exoneration before the investigation to impact a presidential election, never mind lying to four FISA judges to get warrants to spy on Americans and opposition party candidate representatives. Well, Sean, this is where I get myself in a little bit of trouble because all of the, the, the principal decision makers now uh, were put in place by, by President Trump. Uh, Jeff Sessions, Rod Rosenstein, Chris Ray. It's no longer Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder and Jim Comey. I mean, it's our folks. So if, if they have uncovered systemic abuse or any potential criminality, they have an obligation to prosecute it. My fear is when you have the head of the FBI stand up in front of the entire world and exonerate her the way Jim Comey did, I don't know a prosecutor in the world that is good enough to win that case. So our opportunity to find out whether or not she violated the Espionage Act, I think Jim Comey ruined that. Ruined, they ruined it by not interviewing her seriously, uh, and, and then they ruined it by that unprecedented press conference. So we'll never know the answer to your question. All right, Congressman, profound words. I hope the American people are paying very close attention. I think you did a great job today. We have a lot of ground to cover.